Welcome in Dynasty Fam. Thank you guys for joining. Got a good show for today talking about NFL Week 14 waivers. Going to give you the top seven waivers to add in your Dynasty Leagues. So starting off, guys, going to start with people that we think should be rostered in your Fantasy Leagues, right? So we have uh, really just a couple of handcuffs, guys, this late in the game. Just want to make sure these guys are rostered. Just some upside if the starting running back were to go down. So you have Michael Carter, 64% rostered. Pretty much just you've already seen, you know, Connor had a great game, but he is he is already 28 years old, had a previous knee injury already this season. So Michael Carter should be rostered. Murray and Fournette, guys, both in the 60% range. And Murray really has been get, getting some work, decent amount of work, right? The la- They were on by, but last week got nine carries, five targets in week 12. But, you know, you never know. They may give Fournette a look pretty soon, right? Got the veteran Fournette there on the roster. So both of these guys, I think, are decent handcuffs players to add if something were to happen to James Cook. And then you have Samaji P. Ryan, guys. You had Javante uh, left a week ago with a neck injury, right? So it's been a little bit banged up. Samaji, just someone that I think should be rostered. As well as Rico Dowdle, guys. All the asterisk players are my favorite players to add right now. Rico Dowdle, just a high upside guy. A high upside handcuff and a good offense if something were to happen to Tony Pollard. Israel Abanikanda, guys, 68% rostered. It was unsure if Brees Hall was going to play this week. It was reported that Brees was dealing with a hamstring injury. So if Brees were to miss time, guys, and really, guys, if the Jets don't have much to play for down the stretch, they gave Dalvin Cook quite a bit of carries this past week. So maybe they give Israel Abanikanda a look and let Brees Hall rest up till next season. So I think Israel Abanikanda, just somebody that should be rostered right now, as well as Jake Browning, guys. He just had a monster game through for over 350 yards on Monday Night Football. So definitely this roster percentage is going to go up after this week. He's right now only 63% rostered. So in Superflex Leagues, definitely someone that needs to be rostered. And coming in now at our top seven waiver wire ads if you did not see last week's video guys i would encourage to look at the week 13 video as well because there's some guys that i probably could have put on here again with that have just some upside down the stretch right now of our fantasy leagues definitely check out those players because they are all seven of these are different from last week guys i did not include one single player that was a repeat the only ones that were on here were some of these honorable mentions we have nick mullins and hall Pretty much, guys, Josh Dobbs threw for like threw for four picks last week. If Dobbs comes out, has another bad game, we could see Mullins, right? He's back off of the IR now. He's healthy. We could see Mullins or maybe they give the rookie Hall another look. These are just kind of some stashes right here for your Superflex Leagues. Also, Kyle Trask. Baker Mayfield just gets banged up every week, guys. Leaves. It seems he leaves and comes back. So Kyle Trask is just an upside little guy to have for your super flex leagues chris rodriguez running back for the washington commanders rookie running back so right now they are on by that's why he has an asterisk by his name not that i love him more than others the commanders are going to be on by right you have the cardinals and commanders going to be on by this week so b rob left the game with a hamstring injury guys and did not return in that gibson got 10 carries this past week Chris Rodriguez got seven for 29 yards and only ran, he ran three routes, right? Gibson, I think, ran like 17. So the commanders like Gibson in the passing game, right? But there are some carries to go around, I think, in this commander's offense. We saw B-Rob really gets a big majority of the carries. And so far, Gibson's most rush attempts that he's had in a game has only been six up until this point. This week, he got 10, got the bump in the carries, but really up until this point, only six carries. That was his season high. I think there's some opportunity here with Chris Rodriguez in this commander's offense, but keep an ear out to the report. See what's going on with B-Rob, if he's going to miss time after this week. I think that Chris Rodriguez is somebody that we could add. See what happens, right? Now, at number seven, here we go. Starting off with our top seven waiver wire ads. Players with the asterisks are my favorite ads of this week so at number seven montgomery and jamichael hasty hasty is a seven percent rostered Ramondre left the game with an ankle sprain probably going to miss some time guys you have zeke the next man up but zeke was also banged up as well right so i like hasty i think the most guys as a stash here i know montgomery has already been in the offense already been being suited out 
for the team, right? Hasty was a healthy scratch. They acquired him off of the Jags. He's been in New England for a few weeks now, getting acclimated to the offense, but he has shown some playmaking ability. And now that he's been with the team a few weeks, right, maybe he can get us, maybe he can suit up this next week in week 14 and make something happen for that desperate New England offense. So we'll see if he gets some opportunity in week 14. Now coming in at six guys, you have Demarcus Robinson. Demarcus Robinson always kind of shows flashes it seems for the past few seasons and he gets he's a, a waiver wire name that people are liking but this week demarcus robinson only five percent rostered and i don't love it guys but he is a good veteran right decent veteran wide receiver puka is dealing with some injuries right this game he left briefly and now we know it is a ac joint injury or ac joint sprain to his shoulder and cup also dealing with injuries all season as well so Robinson has been earning time on the field. This week, he ran more routes than Tutu Atwell. He was second in routes run with 20. Puka had 19. Tutu ran 17. So Robinson went four for 55 and a TD this week. Going to have decent opportunity, it seems like, week to week, as well as just a good wide receiver handcuff for Cooper Cup or Puka right now. At number five, we have Brevin Jordan, tight end from the Houston Texans. So Schultz has been dealing with a hamstring injury, and Jordan has had a nice game this past week. He was second in targets with five. He went three for 64, man. So that, that's pretty good. Three catches, 64 yards. We also know, sadly, Tank Dell out for the rest of the season. And that leaves just a massive dent in this wide receiver or in this passing offense of the Houston Texans as far as targets are concerned. And I think with Stroud leading the offense, guys, and Jordan could see some increased opportunity and end the season on a high note, especially if Schultz were to miss out some more time. If he keeps playing well, right, he's already been kind of eating into Schultz's snap share these past couple weeks. So if he shows that he can just continue to make plays for this Houston Texas, maybe build some chemistry with Stroud, definitely like Brevin Jordan down the stretch to end on a good note. And coming in at number four, guys, we have Xavier Gibson. And Gibson has just earned some trust and favor in the New York Jets staff, guys, as the season has gone along. So he continues to make plays and really uh, on special teams, and now he's worked himself onto the field. This week he was second in routes run with 31. Lazard was the next closest in routes run. He had 24. That was third on the team. Obviously, Garrett Wilson was first. So it was a close game as well, guys. Worth noting, this was 13-8, to eight, right, versus the Falcons. And in this game, they played Gibson a lot. Six targets this game. That uh, was second for wide receivers. And in that, he had five receptions with that for a team high 77 yards. So took five receptions for 77 yards. Randall Cobb was also a healthy scratch. So I think there's some upside here down the stretch with Xavier Gibson. And if he can just show that he can be a playmaker for them, that Jets offense earned some more trust and some more playing time going into next season, which I would really love for Xavier Gibson's value in Dynasty as you'll have Aaron Rodgers returning as well. So Xavier Gibson, really just a guy not to play right now, right? Obviously, some of these guys I like more so as just stashing for next year. And Xavier Gibson, I think, is a good upside stash for that New York Jets offense. And coming in at number three, we have Joe Flacco. The veteran guys came in and dropped two TDs for 254 yards. He did throw one pick. But a solid first game back, guys. 16 fantasy points and takes on Jacksonville next week, who just gave up a ton of points to Jake Browning. So I think he's a solid add right now, especially in your Superflex leagues. Only 30% rostered if you need a QB. And coming in at number two, guys, man that balled out this Monday night was Parker Washington, the sixth-round rookie out of Penn State. 5'10", 202 pounds, guys, and he is built like a truck. He stepped in for the injured Christian Kirk, went down. We know now it was a groin injury. Don't know the extent if he's going to miss time. But Parker Washington came in, guys, and balled out. He caught everything that they threw at him, was six for six, 61 yards out of that, including a tough touchdown catch, guys. If you have not seen it, make sure you watch the highlight on that. But he got it out of a defender's hands, jumps in the air, kind of floats in the air a little bit deflects it out of the defender's hands, kind of bounces out a little bit. Then he hauls it in at the back of the end zone and still manages to land and bounce. So it just shows great potty control on that catch. It's a great catch. Make sure you check out the highlight. He ended up with 17.10 fantasy points on the day. So definitely some upside, I think. Only 30% rostered right now. 
a good little upside guy to add good stash towards the end of the season heading into 2024 if any of these rookies right do anything really to end the season on a good note Definitely going to be good for their value heading into 2024. The only negative, guys, is I don't know the extent, but Trevor Lawrence did get hurt this game. We'll see. Hopefully he can be back. I don't know the extent of the injury, but that would definitely hurt Parker Washington down the stretch. We'll see what happens if Christian Kirk comes back as well. But Parker Washington definitely got some man fantasy managers' attention today, and I think if you, he is a good stash heading into 2024. And at number one, guys, we have famous Jameis Carr in concussion protocol again for the second time in only a few weeks. So more than likely, Carr going to miss some time, guys. He's uh, Derek Carr also dealing with a rib injury. So Jameis Winston now has the opportunity to start for the New Orleans Saints. Takes on Carolina and the New York Giants, guys. Those are the next two games for, for Jameis Winston if he were to get the start those two games which it is looking like. We know Jameis is just known to be a good good fantasy option. Right? He always just going to get the yards, get some touchdowns, going to get you those fantasy points. So he also think more than likely going to have Shahid back as well. So I think Jameis Winston definitely going to be a top add on the waiver wire, especially in these super flex leagues. So that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to check out last week's waiver video for some more upside stashes for your fantasy leagues. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you like Dynasty Fantasy Football and enjoy the video. Good luck this week on the waiver wire and thanks for watching. <laughs>